Okay, buddy, yeah. thank you very much for making time to share your insights into the future of leadership. But before we go into the future, can you share a little bit about your own background? Okay. Where, where did you grow up? Well, firstly, thank you for having me. I grew up, I was born and bred in Johannesburg. Um, when I was born, my parents lived in Soweto, and then we moved through to the East Rand um, in Spadeview. And yeah, I've just been in Johannesburg since. And yeah, I'm the first of three children um, from two happily married parents. And um, throughout my schooling, I went to Greenside Primary, then went on to Sandringham High School. And I so, completed my BCom Industrial Psychology at the University of Johannesburg. So what was your dream career when you grew up? Firstly was to be a pediatrician until my family doctor told me that um, going into the medical field in South Africa won't be wise because doctors in South Africa work all the time and I won't have time for family if that was my prospects of um, having a family. So my second option was engineering, um, aeronautical engineering. My mom actually pushed me for that field. However, I landed up completing um, my BCom Industrial Psychology. Okay. Yeah, so it's quite different from... So, uh, being a doctor to all the way to industrial psychology. So where did you start your career? I started my career working for a small recruitment company based in Madrid. I worked there for about just over a year, moved over to another recruitment company, more generalist um, um, in terms of recruitment. I spent also a couple of months there and then... Um, I decided then to open my own business, mm -hmm. which is Clientscape, which is a recruitment company focusing on um, sourcing engineers and artisans within the chemical, industrial, mining sectors. Right. Yes. So I, I pushed my recruitment business together with a business partner for about four years prior to starting um, venturing into farming. So what attracted you to agriculture? I had met an entrepreneur at one of these, um, you know, entrepreneurial events and he was sitting next to me and when we were just introducing ourselves, he just told me that he's, he was an engineer and then moved over into farming, um, started producing cash crops to um, generate enough revenue to start his piggery business. So that was his goal. Um, till date, he's, he hasn't uh, grown his business in piggery. He's a full, fully fledged vegetable farmer. So we just started chatting and um, I was really in, um, interested in the agricultural landscape. I just didn't think farming could be turned into a business. Um, yeah, so I, I probed Eric um, with many questions and from there that's what sparked my interest in agriculture and I think within two weeks then I'd registered Green Terrace and started looking for land. And today you've got your own land? You've got yes, your own fast track about close right. to four years later I've got my own farm. Um, I was initially leasing um, a 14 hectare farm in Boxburg. Mm -hmm. That's where I started in 2016 growing baby marrows, peppers, green beans and spinach. And now I've just acquired a new piece of um, land in the Babsfontein area. Right. Yeah. Now, today you are leading voice in the future of agriculture. Uh, in your view, <laughs> what will it take to uh, secure or to, to achieve food security for the country and, and the continent? Definitely consistent production. Um, you know, we've got so many factors uh, affecting um, agriculture, such as climate change, drought, the weakening economy, um, high cost of uh, imports on mechanization, such as tractors and uh, agricultural inputs. But I think, you know, to constantly achieve food security, we need to increase our production. So making sure that we're able to produce large amounts of um, food or, or, or life or animal products right. um, in land that we already have that's available to us um, using the most minimal resources as possible without obviously breaking the bank and 
yeah, just be generating a good profit by, by, by making sure that we use all the resources possible to increase food production. And also throughout the seasons, um, you know, we've got um, four seasons within the year or climate yeah, season. We've got four seasons within the year. Um, South African landscape in terms of agriculture is very vast. Uh, and the fact that certain areas are now experiencing severe droughts and have been for a couple of years now. So I think it's about identifying those um, hot spots within our geographical regions where we haven't really focused on, where we can um, do a bit of a significant amount of investment in it and producing more food in those new regions. Right. Yeah. And Bali, tell us who inspired you in your early days? Sure. I think my entrepreneurial journey was inspired by a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad by okay. Robert Kiyosaki. Yeah, I, I read that um, in my early varsity years. Right. And I think that book literally transformed me um, in terms of the way I think and how I view business, um, entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. and really that, that that was my first, I suppose, welcome mm -hmm. to um, learning about entrepreneur, entrepreneurship but, uh, or business in general. Yeah. And looking back over your career, would you say there was a major turning point where things could have gone different but you decided to take your career this way? Absolutely. The major turning point was leaving the recruitment industry to venture into agriculture. Uh, being a first generation farmer, no experience or knowledge within agriculture whatsoever. So that was a major turning point. Um, you know, when you complete become industrial psychology, people tend to put you into the people management, human resource space um, within a corporate environment. And now having diverted completely into more mm. open doors out in the field, learning about crop production um, and other stuff um, you know related to farming that has been a complete turning point in my career right what is driving you today what is driving me today yes um, please explain just explain well what what's is. what's getting you excited what is uh, when you get up in the morning what yeah. are you looking forward to what are you Definitely working towards my business. Um, green right. terrace is still uh, you know my major um, drive um, I, I thoroughly enjoy being a farmer and reading about technology and how it's transforming agriculture I mean mm. I just said that I bought a new piece of property uh, in the Babsfontein area and what's driving me is wanting to grow this new farm and making it into a smart farm, incorporating all the things that I've read from a technology perspective, from an e-commerce perspective, um, smart farming, smart agriculture. So this, uh, without revealing too much, I'm already um, doing, making plans to convert or transform this new farm that I've purchased into a smart farm. Mm. Um, so that's keeping me excited. Um, agriculture is very different, you know, uh, what was that what was true yesterday might not hold true for today and I think just interacting with different people, meeting different people from different viewpoints, um, age groups, um, uh, I suppose even from different countries you know that I interact with all the time just keeps me going within agriculture, it just makes me want to learn and achieve more and do more. So um, I can definitely say my business keeps me going. <laughs> and all the other stuff that I do on the side um, related to agriculture, yeah. Right. So Mbali, I know it's a big question, but what does the future of leadership mean to you? Sure. Um, and what would you like the future leader to be like? Yes. Seeing that you are a leader in your own right. I think the future of leadership means to me, um, or within any individual um, wanting to pursue or be in a position of leadership, First, I think being self-aware of who you are, your personal traits, your strengths, your weaknesses, focusing on your strengths. Um, being mindful as well of the things that motivate you in life, that push you to become much greater uh, than what you are or what you're actually meant to be. Leaders, I think, need to be also compassionate in in the world of today and for definitely for the world of tomorrow um, and also open to new experiences diverse cultures diverse histories diverse backgrounds and 
open to the unknown because the world is transforming at such a fast pace. Um, today we're talking about 4IR, you know, maybe in about three years, five years, 4IR could be an ancient thing. So leaders, I also think, should be obviously open to the unknown, open to um, reaching and going into new frontiers. Um, for yeah, for many reasons, whether it's from a personal perspective or from a business perspective. That's um, how I think the future of leadership should look like. Right. Now, yeah. Mali, um, what have you learned from your own journey? If there's one quality that's really important for building future leaders, what is it? You, what would your advice be? What, what, what should future learned? leaders focus on looking back at your own journey and how you've overcome obstacles and how you pivoted your career? That nothing's ever the same, I think. Yeah, um, I've said that the agricultural uh, industry is very different. You know, what was true yesterday may not be true for today or tomorrow. Um, so being able to respond, not react, but respond to challenges, right. to, respo to respond to crises um, with whatever resources that you have or your, your, your mental capacity or mental thinking or your knowledge or experience gained in the past, being able to respond um, positively um, towards any, anything that may come in your way from, from a business element. I think that's what I've taken from my, my experience and journey in farming. Um, and also being adaptive, um, like I said, to, 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 new, to, new, to new positions, to new frontiers, to new, to new opportunities, to new challenges as well. Um, yeah, that's, I think, the key things that I've learned um, through my journey in farming as a leader. Now, Mbali, you built a very strong leadership brand on LinkedIn, a many cool <laughs> video. Thank you. So what's your advice for future leaders? How should they handle social media to build their own leadership brand? I think what I'm learning, it's not about you, the individual. It really is about others, impacting others, changing the lives of others, um, transforming the lives of others, bringing and adding value into others. So um, I did mention you off the record that, you know, uh, I'm, you know I'm, a, I'm an introvert um, and I don't like to share my private life on social media and things like that. But... I'm learning that really it's not about me, it's about helping others, you know, from the experience and the journey that I've walked. And um, if we can impart knowledge onto others to also enable them to give them a step up, um, where, whether they're going into business, in agriculture, in their careers, in their professional careers, in their corporate space, um, I think that that's what leaders should do, really. Um, use social media in a positive way and it's up to you really about how much you share what you put on social media as long as I think it's coming from a positive, true, as well as um, a, I suppose, what's the word I'm looking for? An authentic point of view. Yes, right. that's that's the, that's the word. So as long as it, com it comes from or, or from an authentic point of view, then I think that's what social media should be used for, to develop and transform the lives of others as leaders. Right. Yeah. Now, Mbani, as a mentor to future leaders, can you maybe share a success story or two where you mentored somebody, be it formally or informally, mm. and that person took your advice to heart and uh, went on to, to make an impact? Sure. Uh, no one single individual stands out. I think it's from a group perspective where obviously due to limited time and with all the work that I'm doing, yes, I do maintain individuals, but what I can really think of is the feedback that I get. Um, and that could come from an SMS and from an email where people would say, you know, thank you for giving me this tip. For example, I wanted to spend money on buying a farm, but, you know, I didn't know that leasing a farm could be an option and I could still make it a viable uh, um, entity. So that is one. Or when people had said, where people have come to me and said, you know, Mbali, I'm married. Uh, my husband and I both work in corporate, but I really want to pursue farming. I've, ho I've held it back for many years now, but I think now I'm in the point and stage in my life where my kids are, are, just, uh, are, 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 are at a certain age where they're independent and we've reached a stability in our, in our household. And really now this is a point, 
the point in time where I really want to pursue agriculture. And, you know, they tell me things like, this is the amount of savings or investments that I have. What should I do? And being able to guide them, you know, um, obviously the first reaction mostly most of the time when I get these type of emails is like, no, just stay in your corporate job because right. um you know the business environment is quite tough yeah. nowadays and um but yeah it's it's you you really co- the best that you can do is just advise someone and show them the pros and cons but ultimately it's their decision at the end of the day so you know getting feedback from people to say thank you for your honesty uh, maybe I've, I've held back from starting the business or um i've i've decided a different approach maybe just to 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 start farming but have a full-time manager at the moment and manage you know the farm 60 give it 60 40 percent of my time um yeah so th- that type of f- feedback has been overwhelming for me and it's made it's made me uh realize that I actually i am learning something even in my own entrepreneurial journey that i could give on to others and um allow others to make less mistakes than i did um but however, we all have our own journeys and, you know, mistakes are inevitable. We are going to um, come uh, in a point in our time or in our lives or in the business where we, got, we are going to fail, fail very hard. But, you know, it's about embracing those failures. So, yeah, those are the type of positive feedbacks that I've received from people that I've mentored. And um, most importantly for graduates as well, people um, contacting me apply, uh, wanting to uh, apply for a job within Green Tears and I, and I think, wow, you know, you've got such fantastic um, qualifications. Maybe perhaps look at an industry that you didn't think you'd fit in. You know, if your passion is, yes, agriculture, but technology, maybe apply look at applying for at a tech company um, that's that focuses in the agriculture industry and develop softwares and solutions for their, for, the, for for farmers you know because we need those type of individuals um, I've, I've advised graduates maybe to look at um, careers in research um, which they would not ought, or ordinarily look for you know the typical ones that come to me would be I want a, a, an apprentice job in farming or don't you know other farmers who are looking for apprentices who could work and you know who have a positions in their farms so yeah the, the 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 type of people that i advise or mentor is quite diverse from professional individuals to graduates and that 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 type of feedback has made me know that i am making a difference which is great now buddy are there any role models of leadership big or small and maybe in your community that you would Definitely. recommend recommend future leaders should study and learn from Oh, it's difficult because you know farmers are so hidden in their in the corner in their own small corners of the world. But for me, to be quite honest, Dr. Nick, uh, my heroes and people that I really look up to and aspire to are farmers, um, especially those that I have in my con- in my network, um, commercial farmers, people that have been farming for more than forty years, fifty years, um, uh, in different parts of the country, and just how they've embraced their journey in life and their experiences in farming and how they've really stood the test of time. Um, very profitable in their businesses, but still remaining very humble. Um, others that I look up to is, um, I don't know if I'm able to mention his name, but I'll keep quiet. I won't, I won't say, but he's the CEO of a very um, established Um, fresh produce company and just knowing having learned about his story this year and obviously meeting him um, as an individual and having interacted with him on a personal level he's inspired me as well just to always succeed because he's he's a go-getter just like myself I see myself in him and yeah those are the people that I really aspire to so it's difficult because they're not out in the open in the public you know you really have to be in the farming space to kind of know them and um, get to get to uh, uh, interact with them on a one-on-one level but for me um, the South African commercial farmers are my heroes and leaders in, in, in many aspects right. um, yeah so Mbali how can our listeners connect with you and where should they follow you <laughs> um, from a social media perspective I am on LinkedIn it's Mbali Nwoko um, Instagram, it's still Mbali Nwoko. However, they could drop me an email on Mbali at greenterrace.co.za or our info at greenterrace.co.za email address. And yeah, that's that's one way they could reach out to me. And last but not least, Bali, is there one piece of advice for future leaders 
that uh, you would really like to convey to them about how they should conduct their own lives? Sure. Um, I think live an authentic life. Mm -hmm. Too many people, I've, I've, I, yeah, I, I think what I've learned in business is that a lot of people are starting to fake it until they make it. Um, when I went into farming, you know, and started doing my research, wanting to interact with farmers on the ground, because I had no knowledge and experience of farming, those that I found on the net, and once I started to go view their farms, I found that they're actually not farmers. You know, people have been given land, mechanization, but are not really doing anything with it, but they call themselves farmers. Um, you know, sorry to if I may be offending people, anyone who's listening, but you meet those entrepreneurs or people who say, yes, I'm in business, I'm an entrepreneur, who say that they're experiencing challenges in business um, uh, in a liquidity point of view, cash flow point of view, um, dealing with staff, um, all these type of issues that come with business. And then when you actually um, do your due diligence and probe more and ask questions from these individuals, you find that they're actually not in business. You know, they might have registered a company and, you know, it seems like being an entrepreneur is the end thing. And that has really put me off because business is really hard, you know. And so I think for future leaders, definitely be authentic. You know, it's okay to start a business. And even if it fails along the way and you go back into the corporate world, that's fine. You know, who cares? You know, it's, it's, it's really about doing what you really want to do. Um, being selfish and putting your needs first, first, first of all. Um, and not having to care about what other people think. You know, even if you've failed, it's okay. Um, you never know when might be the right ch point in time for you to start all over again. So I think leaders definitely need to be authentic, both in their personal and in their business or professional um, careers or lives. And because people are looking, you know, people are looking, they're looking at what you're doing, they're watching at what, look, yeah, basically studying you as an individual, um, as a mentor, as a person that they want to aspire to. Um, and that's definitely what I've learned as well, where people have reached out to me and said, you know what, we've been following your work on LinkedIn or been reading your articles on Farmers Weekly or the, the blog posts and you know, when we've come to your farm, we can definitely see that you are walking the walk and talking the talk. Mm -hmm. And you've been inspirational in so many ways and how I've touched or transformed their lives and they want to know more um, and they want to learn more. So I definitely would say authenticity right now is a currency for living a happy life um, as a leader and as an individual. Well, yeah. Bari, thank you so much for sharing your insights and your wisdom. Thank into you, the Dr. future Thank and you. helping us to future proof the one industry that is uh, key yes to the survival and the prosperity yes. of the continent absolutely thank you for having me